In this problem, we're told the coefficient of static friction between the 3 kilogram crate and the 35 degree incline of this figure is 0.3. What minimum force F must be applied to the crate perpendicular to the incline to prevent the crate from sliding down? So I went ahead and recreated the drawing in the book, right? So we have this thing on an incline, 35 degrees, right? It's going to be 3 kilograms, and we have this perpendicular force, right, to the incline. And essentially, what we're trying to do is solve for this force so that this box does not move. Right? We want it just the force to be the minimum force, right? So this thing doesn't move. We also know it's going to have a coefficient of static friction of 0.3. And yeah, so the first thing you always do with these problems is you always want to draw a free body diagram because uh, we need to know what forces are acting on it. So let's go ahead and label those first. So on the box, right, straight down, we're going to have the force due to gravity, right, which is just going to be mg, right? So we know it's going to be mg and it's not perpendicular, it just goes straight down. And then we also have a normal force, right, which is going to go straight up perpendicular to the box like this, right, acting on the box, right? We're also going to have some frictional force, right, which is because it's going to slide down this way. So the frictional force acts in the opposite direction. So you could just call this F sub F or F sub F or S. So you can call it whatever you want. But yeah, so these are going to be the different forces acting on our box. OK, and so let's think about how we're going to solve this problem. So we're trying to solve for minimum force F. So we're trying to find F. And generally, when you want to solve for something in this problem or these problems, you take the sum of the forces in the direction in which that thing is applied. So when you solve these problems, notice this line I'm drawing right here and then this line. So you want to imagine it like an X and Y axis. So everything along this line is we call the X axis. Everything along this line is in the Y axis, right? So when I say take the sum of the forces in the Y, I essentially mean the forces acting along this line. OK, so just keep that in mind. And when I say X, I just mean these. But yeah, so let's go ahead and solve. So always so we're going to start by taking the forces in the y right and so the sum of the forces in the y right f equals ma but in the y direction it's not going to move at all right it's not moving at all in this direction upwards it's only moving in the x direction right like we said so in the y it's just going to be equal to zero so you say zero equals and then you just want to sum up the forces so what are the different forces acting in this um right on that line so you're gonna have f right and when a force goes down right this way it's negative when it goes up it's positive Right, so we have F sub n, which goes upwards, so it's positive. Then we minus F, right, because it's going downwards. And then there's another force acting on it, which is a component of another, for, uh, another force, right? So we have this gravity force, right, but we need the Y component, right? So notice it's going to have some Y component here, right? This is the X and Y component. So we need the Y component of this, right, because it's along this line, right? So we have to take into account that force too. So what is this force? So the way you want to think about it is like a triangle. Right, so here's our triangle, and essentially what this angle right here is, it's going to be 35 degrees. Right, so this angle is essentially this angle right here. Okay, so this angle is 35 degrees, and the way this works is the angle between uh, mg and your y component is always the angle of the incline. So just keep that in mind. And then mg, this right here is your hypotenuse. Right, so it's essentially this line right here. Okay, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve for this one right here. Right, and so this is adjacent to the angle. So on our triangle, it's this right here. So I'm actually just going to label it Y. So we need to solve for Y, right? Because this is what we're trying to find. This triangle is just this uh, triangle, right, that I made. And so how do we solve for this? So basically what you do is you use um, trig. And so what we're going to do is take the sine of the angle. In this case, it's 35 degrees. Or sorry, we're taking the cosine of the angle. Uh, sine would be used to find the X component. So you take the cosine of your angle, 35 degrees in this case, right? And what is cosine equal to? Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the adjacent side? It's Y over the hypotenuse, which is this. So it's Y over MG. So if we want to solve for y, you just multiply both sides by mg. And so essentially y in this case, or the, the vertical component, right, the y component of your gravity force is just mg times the cosine of 35, right? So it's going to be minus 2, right? Because it's going downwards, it's pulling it down. So, or it's down on the y-axis, sorry. So it's minus mg times the cosine of 35, right? So now we've got our equation. And so this right here, we know mg times the cosine of 35. That's pretty simple. But we don't know F sub n, right? Because we need all the numbers in this if we actually want to go ahead and solve. So we need to find F sub n. So how do we find F sub n? So I think there's multiple ways you can do it. But the way that pops out to me is they give you the frictional, uh, they give you mu sub s for a reason, right? So mu sub s, they give it to us. And we know that the frictional force is equal to mu sub s times F sub n, right? So the static frictional force or F sub f is equal to mu sub s times F sub n. So if we want to find F sub n, what we can do is just take the frictional force and divide by mu sub s, right? And so we're not told the frictional force explicitly, but it is, um, we can find it. So the way we're going to do it is by saying, okay, the box isn't moving, right? So we know the box is not moving at this point in time, right? So the frictional force has to be equal to the force being applied on the box right now, 
okay? And so what that means essentially is what are the forces acting in the X direction, right? So in the X direction, we have uh, the only forces acting are the force of friction and this X component of our uh, gravity force, right? So the force as a result of gravity. And so what that means is, right, if there's the only two, right? So if you take the sum of the forces in the X direction, set them equal to zero, right? Doing the same thing here. And then you say zero equals the forces in the X, which are F sub F and uh, this one right here. So it's just going to be minus F sub F, right? Because it's slowing it down. It's going in the opposite plus, and then whatever this one is, right? And so this one, uh, we're going to do the same thing we did here, right? But we're trying to find this one instead, right? Because Y was this one right here. Now we're trying to find X, okay? So how do we find X? So this one you're using sine, like I said before. So you just take the sine of your angle equals what is sine? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So Katoa. So the opposite is X over MG. Multiply both sides by MG, just like last time. And the X, right? The X component of your gravity is MG times the sine of 35. So plus mg times the sine of 35, okay? And so if you add f, the force of friction to the other side, the force of friction is mg times the sine of 35, right? So now we know the force of friction, okay? We know mu sub s, that's given, and then that's going to be equal to f sub n. Plug in f sub n, we can solve for f. So uh, yeah, we just got to plug for the rest of the stuff. So the force of friction is just uh, mg, so right, mg times the sine of 35, over mu sub s, which is uh, 0.3. So I'm just going to write mu sub s actually. So now we have the force of, or sorry, this is not f sub n. This is uh, f, right? This is f sub n, not the force of friction, right? So f sub n equals the force of friction, right? Over mu sub s. So now we can just go ahead and plug it in. So uh, we want to solve for f, right? So f is going to be equal to. So if we add mg times the cosine of 35, right? Or sorry, I'm just adding f to the other side. So it's just going to be f sub n minus mg times the cosine of 35, right? So plugging in f sub n, which we just solved for, mg times the sine of 35, right? mg times the sine of 35 all over mu sub s, and then we minus mg times the cosine of 35. So now it's just plugging in the numbers, the mass, what is the mass of our crate? It's three kilograms. Multiply it by 9.8. Multiply by the sine of 35 all over mu sub s, so mu sub s is just uh, 0.3, right, that's given. Then you're going to minus mg, I'm going to write it down here, but keep in mind you're minusing. So minus m, which is 3, times 9.8, times the cosine of 35. Right, so I just want you to plug this in. Right, so do 3 times 9.8, times the sine of 35, divide by 0.3, uh, and then minus 3 times 9.8 times the cosine of 35. So when you do this, you're going to get force, right, so the force that needs to be applied, 31.127. So you can round however you want. Just make sure you do what your teacher wants you to do. So, uh, sorry. So it's, I, actually, I messed this up. 32.127. Sorry about that. But yeah, so it's going to be equal to uh, thirty-one or 32.127 and then round however you want. So 32 point, I'm just going to round. So 32.1, round to the tenths place. So 32.1 and then it's force. So we obviously measure that in newtons. So 32.1 newtons, that's going to be the force required to keep this in place. Right, so answer to this problem is 32.1 newtons, and so yeah, hopefully you found this useful.